So last night, or it might have been the night before, in either event, either last night or the night before, I, I did a video, and in the video, I was doing a night mission, and one of the things that I briefly touched on was that I have a plan over the next nine months to do two long distance rides. One of them being about a 450 mile ride from Tampa, Florida to Key West, Florida. The second, presumably around May, maybe early June of next year, is a ride up US 1, beginning in Key West, Florida, at mile marker zero, all the way up US 1 into Maine to the border of Canada. It, it, it's an ambitious goal, but it, it's certainly one that's achievable. Today, today I did something, I took an action, I married an action with that goal. I did something today that will directly contribute to achieving that goal down the road. L let me explain what I mean. So if you follow me on YouTube, then you have probably at some point heard me reference a lady by the name of Mel Robbins. More particularly, Mel Robbins and the five second rule. If you haven't, if you haven't heard me mention Mel Robbins, if you haven't heard me mention the five second rule, when you're done with this video, as long as you're already on YouTube, pop over and look up Mel, M-E-L, Mel Robbins, five second rule. Okay, there's literally going to be thousands, thousands of videos about it. Now, I don't know if she pioneered the five second rule or simply coined the phrase. I'm not talking about the five second rule, how long you have to pick up food off the floor and eat it before it's contaminated. This is a little bit more, a little bit more serious than that. Like I said, go watch the video. I'm gonna paint you the most broadest of terms. In essence, Mel Robbins' five second rule says this. It says you have five seconds from the time you have an idea to marry that idea with some kind of action towards it or your brain is gonna talk you out of the idea. And she gives many examples. I can think of many examples on my own. One of the examples she gives, and I like it, is you're in a meeting, you think up something to say. It's, it's a good addition to the topic if you sit there and think more than five seconds on it, you're probably gonna lose your nerve, keep it to yourself, the idea is never gonna come out for anybody to hear. If you have the idea and instantly say it, or at least make a note of it, or make a recording of it, something, then there's a good chance that that idea is going to live to see another day. You have five seconds. I'll give you another example. You see a pretty girl, you see a handsome guy, you say, I'd like to go ask that person to dance. You got about five seconds to act on that impulse, get your ass walking across the floor, because if you sit there in that chair and think about it for five seconds or more, your brain is gonna talk you out of that idea. So we've kinda, I've covered, I've painted you the broad strokes of the five second rule. She is infinitely more well versed in it and does a much better job of presenting it. I highly recommend going and looking it up. It's gonna, it's gonna make some drastic changes in your life if you hear it and incorporate it into your life. At any rate, I have been, had this idea to do this long distance bike ride from Key West to Maine for most of my adult life, or some variation of it across the country or down the Pacific Crest and go from the border of Canada all the way down to San Diego, something, some version of that. I've been meaning to do this for at least 20 years. Today I took an action that was specifically designed towards that goal, a small action. But really, that's all it takes. Like I said, if you have an idea, you got about five seconds to get that idea out. Whether you stand up and say it, call someone and tell them, put it into your recorder, write it down on a piece of paper, etch it on a wall, you've got five seconds to do something with it or your brain's gonna start telling you things like, nah, yeah, but what about this? No, that's not good. Of course, this could happen. And the idea's gone. It dies, okay? Five seconds. I took a small action today. It's a very small action, but it is a determined action towards my goal. Let me show you. Okay, so let me tell you what I got going on here. This is what I did, okay? What you're looking at here is a pair of arrow bars. 
right? What it's designed to do is to improve the aerodynamic efficiency of the rider on the bike. And this is how it does it. I'm gonna give you a quick little impromptu description, or yeah, description, presentation, in any event. Instead of sitting back up on the seat like this, all wide open, catching wind, it provides me the opportunity to put my, bring my arms in, close up my chest, bring my head down, and get into a more aerodynamic position. Ideally, creating somewhat of a slipstream. Instead of the wind hitting me in the chest, it'll go over my head, down my back, and out the back of the bicycle, okay? Now, I'm on a 42 pound mountain bike. I don't envision that that's gonna increase my speed very much. What I'm hoping it'll do is lessen some of the workload going into headwinds, okay? If I can decrease the amount of watts that I'm having to put in to the same effort to maintain the same speed, even into a 10, 12, 15 mile an hour headwind, that's gonna pay dividends to me over eight, 10, 12 hours a day, six, seven days a week for six, seven, eight weeks at a time. Down the road, that's gonna pay dividends. It's gonna save my legs, number one. Number two, eight to 12 hours a day, six, seven days a week for six, seven, eight weeks at a time, having my hands in the same position all the time is gonna create a lot of stress on my hands, my forearms, up into my shoulders, my back, my neck. Again, over weeks and months, that's gonna cause problems down the road. So this affords me another position. I can rest on these pads without really having to hold on much more than just enough to secure myself to the bike. A nice light grip, give me a position, take some of the pressure off my tailbone on the seat, take some of my pressure, take some of the pressure I should say off my hands and put me into a more aerodynamic position. Try to do this without shaking the camera too much. Yeah, I'm sorry. Number three, and I've already touched on this point, this is the biggest thing I did. Doing this was a small step towards my ultimate goal. I have an idea of riding my bicycle 2,700 miles from Key West, Florida to the border of Canada and Maine. This is a small step marrying an action with an idea directing me towards my ultimate goal. So I accomplished three things today. I increased the aerodynamic proficiency of myself on the bike. I increased my comfort level and I took an action that married my idea with my goal. That's a lot to accomplish in three days. It would be very easy to dismiss this as just a very minor 10 minute thing. And that would be a mistake. It was much more than that. I married an action with an idea and moved myself ever so slightly closer towards my goal. And they look really cool and they're really comfortable. So it was just a big win. Oh, yay, Michael, big win all the way around. I just wanna... Okay guys, there you have it. That's the video for the day. It's a wrap. Let me leave you with one final thought, guys. Having good ideas, it's virtually worthless. Unless, unless you marry that idea and that goal together with an action. Once you start taking action to turn those ideas into goals, that's where the magic comes from, all right? The possibilities then are almost limitless. There's a lawnmower.
there's always a lawnmower or a Harley or a helicopter. I'm sorry, guys. You would think I live in the busiest part of, in the busiest section of the city, but I don't. I live in a nice, quiet residential neighborhood. You wouldn't know it. Anyway, guys, I'm Michael. This is Resolve Life Training. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.